M0FXB, welcome back to my dog walk. Mazzy's here. Say hi, Mazzy. Not gonna say hi. So, yeah, again, the sun is setting in the UK. It's about 6 pm, but before you know it, it will be setting at 5 pm. We have quite short days here in the winter, which is such a shame because we'd rather have long days. But anyway, so this video, we're gonna talk about whether it's sensible to have too many radios. You're fine, and, and, and is having lots of radios, is that too many? Because you'll find, if you speak to most hams, especially hams my age, that we've built up quite a collection of radios and some we keep, some we sell, but as the years go by, if you've been a ham for 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, they're gonna build up. And sometimes we just can't be bothered to sell them. It's just hassle, you know, 20, 30 pound here and there. And so what's my experience? Well, I used to always have two HF radios. Most of the time they were checking the boxes. So ICOM 706, Yesu 857, 897. That was pretty much the radios that I used to always have. And I did have a Kenwood TS2000. Had that for quite a while. It's quite dark here actually which I loved by the way, and I had the 23 centimeter model. And then I would have maybe a dual bander. Uh, eventually I had a C4FM handheld, which was a, let me think now, a Yesu FT1D, an Icom ID51, and an MD380 for DMR. And that was pretty much my shack, which was fine. But I will be honest, I used to get, I used to get very, very bored. Um, I didn't really enjoy it that much. A bit, I'd put it on for an hour, it'd be on there, I'd listen to the local, the local repeaters. And, um, um, some HF, but my antenna was, was just a length of wire. I didn't take much notice of the chargers in my house. So there'd be like nine, nine plus, sometimes even more background noise you know skip and I would think mm, HF ain't that good and then when they were, when the contests were on when the contests were on then yeah it would all come to life a bit um, but I'd have this this noise floor right up nine and so I wouldn't love it that much but anyway then I gradually get started getting hot spots and more radios different radios and I, di I didn't need these radios but what I found was when I was going into my shack because I had say let's say I had 20 radios there that suddenly as soon as I got in my shack sat down I'd, I'd always always had a computer um, next to my radios I think that's essential for proper enjoyment you want a computer or a laptop near your radios so when people are talking you can go on QRZ and um, you can um, look up interests and of course running software. So once I had 20 or 30 radios there, then I found that my shack became more like an, almost like an Aladdin's cave and every day was different. So I would go in and turn on different radios. So uh, for example, when I bought the ICOM 7300, beautiful, beautiful, fantastic radio, definitely the one I recommend to anyone if they're gonna buy a HF radio, get the 7300 because they're quite low, quite well priced second hand now. Uh, that lovely waterfall. And then on top, so I'd sit on top of that my ICOM 706. So you'd have VHF and UHF and even six meters there, plus the ability to go on HF. Why antenna wise, I used to just chuck a, G, a half size G5 RV out the window, literally. And um, I stopped putting collinear antennas on my roof. I stopped doing that because I just said to myself, one day you're going to slip and you're going to hurt yourself and off a ladder or something. So I just started putting them in the loft. Or I would put them about 10 foot off the ground. So at least if I went up a ladder, I'd only have to go up five or six runs. And so, and that was it. And I'd have to, eventually I'd have, you know, I'd have a mobile radio that did D-Star, a mobile radio that did 
um, fusion I tend to use with DMR I tended to use handhelds though nowadays I've got the Anytone 578 which is a 50 watt DMR radio with and we have GPS I mean people would talk about APRS and I would just think well, what's that you know but eventually because most radios especially digital radios will do APRS because you're using with DMR especially DMR you're using an infrastructure that's already in place to, to allow uh, the APRS to eventually get to APRS FI so I, I did enjoy doing that and then after uh, after a while it was all oh, FT everyone was talking about FTA and WSJTX Mazzy's barking at the shadows again and so I gave that a try, FT8, WSJTX. And the thing that really that really made me enjoy FT8 was actually Grid Tracker. If you ever heard of Grid Tracker, where you actually link it to WSJTX. And you get all these live signals on your screen of all the activity. So, um, yeah, that definitely opened up the hobby. So all I say is, when you're buying radios, don't think of it like you're buying... You you know, you're trying to save money on your food shop. You're buying a hobby item. If you're going, if you had a, a speedboat, or if you went fishing, uh, or you were a skier, you buy equipment that you that's going to enhance your hobby. And the more types of radios, whether it's Kenwood, Icom, Yesu, Zygu, the more types you've got, the more fun you will have. So never feel bad about having a shack full of radios because you are giving yourself and it's your hobby your passion loads of enjoyment so that's it well thanks for watching my little dog walk and it took about 15 minutes today and um yeah buy the radios you like and have fun well because of this beautiful sunset look at that it's walking and mazzy what do you think of the sunset she wants to go on the beach that's what she wants to do Actually, here, this view is where I was flying my drone today. So anyway, if you enjoy my channel, please hit that like. Let's get those subscribers nice and high. If you want to get me a coffee or become a member of my channel, just go for it. Um, it's all about growing a community. We're all enjoying this hobby together. Bye for now, 7-3.